Hello everybody, this is me, Dr. Sergio Rovinsky from Shoulder Planet, here from Sao Paulo, Brazil. I am very honored to be participating here from White Oak, this lovely meeting organized by BOSS, Bombay Orthopedic Society, and I invite you to see all of the videos that I have sent to this wonderful meeting and to learn the most you can with them. And if you have any doubt, don't hesitate in sending me an email. My email is sergio at shoulderplanet.com.br. I thank all of the organization of this lovely meeting, and I hope you have fun seeing all my, my videos and Dani Avat. So, this case is about a 59-year-old man, a 59-year-old anesthesiologist who is a very active sports player. He likes playing sports and he likes skiing and he has always gone to the gym and started to have pain over his, over his right shoulder in the middle of 2009, about seven months ago. So this patient came to, to the office and his physical examination and history resembled very, very clearly an AC joint degenerative disease that was very clearly confirmed by his, his MRI. Now we have seen a, a, a coronal view of his MRI. This is a TT fat set image in which we, we can clearly see a lot of edema and some degenerative cysts in the AC joint, and his tendon was quite looking good, not only in the physical examination, but especially on the, the MRI scan. This is another image of a T2 fat set scan in, this, in the scapular uh, plane of his, his right shoulder, in which we can see that the tendon was really looking good in a very nice, nice shape, and that he had some edema in the very tip of the uh, acromion, and, and that he acromion was something like a type 2 to maybe a type 3 acromion. And now we are seeing another image of his, his MRI. And this is a T2 PET scan image, too, in which we can see not only edema in the very distal part of the distal clavicle, but a very large cyst in the distal clavicle, and that means that he, he had quite an advanced degenerative situation in his AC right joint. So we tried the conservative treatment for about two months, but with absolutely no result, and that was quite expected in such a case, and at that moment, we indicated an, an, an arthroscopy, and that particular arthroscopy was performed about three weeks ago. So this is his arthroscopy, what we are seeing now. First, we are inside the joint. This is a, a right shoulder in which we can see a lot of degenerative tissue in the labrum and just above the biceps with some fraying of the humeral head. The cartilage is quite normal in 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 that in this age. We are seeing now his labrum and his biceps. Uh, after that, we started to establish the anterior portal uh, just above the very s superior part of the subscapularis. We we enter with a hemostat, and now we enter it. We are putting our first cannula. And once the, the the cannula was in place, we started to, to perform a very slight and soft debridement of the head of the of, of the the anchor of the biceps. This is what we are doing now. Not only cleaning the biceps, but but the posterior superior labrum too. Uh, and something interesting was that an endoscopic finding that patient had a a, a beautiful complex in his right shoulder, a cord-like middle humeral ligament. Now we are just, just cleaning it 
It had nothing to do with his pathology, but we would just have to clean it. Now we are testing. The ligament was really very nice. It, uh, and as a next step, we started to test the long head of the biceps. This is something very important to be done in, in arthroscopy, in, in, in arthroscopic evaluation of the, the shoulder. Hopefully, his biceps was really in a nice state, no signs of fraying or even subluxation. Now we are seeing a very healthy tendon. And after that, we had to perform in the articular side just a very slight and soft breedment of the articular margin of the posterior superior cuff. Now we are seeing the insertion. We, we knew that that cuff would very probably be in a very nice state as it was. This is what we are seeing now. And after we perform that breedment, we will have to go to the subacromial space. So now we are in the, in the subacromial space working for the lateral portal, watching through the posterior portal, a lot of bursitis, a lot of synovitis. We, we, we had to remove that all. Now we are starting to detach the coracoacromial ligament from, from its acromial insertion. This is what we are doing now. And once the coracoacromial ligament was detached from its acromial insertion, this is what is it, it, happening now. Uh, at, at, at that moment, I always like to change the portal, so now we are working for the anterior portal and watching for the lateral portal. This is a very nice way to see that the coracoacromial ligament was very securely detached from its acromial insertion, and after that, we started to perform the acromioplasty. Sometimes I, I do it from entering for the posterior uh, Portal and sometimes for the, the, the anterior one, this is what we are doing now, working in the very distal part of the, the acromion, going from medial to lateral, and now the acromioplasty was quite finished. We are seeing that a type 2 acromion was, was then uh, turned into a very flat one. This is uh, the final aspect, now we are, we are coming from posterior to anterior and seeing that a formal decompression was performed. After that, we will just have to look at the, the tendon. This is the tendon. We are working for the anterior portal, watching for the lateral portal. At, at palpation, the tendon was quite in a nice state. Now we are performing just a slight braid one of the birth signs, uh, just very above of the, the most upper fibers, but that that posterior superior cuff was quite in, was in a very nice state. This is what we are seeing now. And we are making the final palpation with no signs of lesion. And at that moment, we will have to perform then the demand for surgery itself. So now we are starting to work in the, in, underneath the AC joint. I'm working for the anterior portal. Now we are seeing the very tip of the distal clavicle. We can see a very nice and a very big spur in the very inferior part of the distal levicle. Now we are starting to, to cut it with the burr. We can see that we are removing the very inferior part of the distal clavicle. And once I remove all the inferior part of the distal levicle, uh, my, my preferred technique is to enter with a Kishna wire from anterior to posterior. This is what we are doing now. And that Kishna wire is going to guide my scope to enter in the very posterior part of the AC joint. So now we are, we are entering in the very posterior part of the AC joint. The acromion is on the right side. The distal levico is on the left side. And this is the best way, in my opinion, to achieve the very superior part of, the, of all the re remaining bone in, in the distal part of the clavicle. Now we are working for the anterior portal and removing all the bone that was left in the anterior superior part of the distal clavicle. Now all that bone was removed. We are using a soft shaver just to have a very clear view of the medial parts of the acromion. We are removing the AC joint capsule. We are seeing the acromion on the right and the very distal part of the clavicle on the left. Now we are, we are using this, the shaver to measure the interval that we had already 
created. It was about f uh, four to five millimeters. This is another way to measure it. We arranged it with a spinal needle from the upper part of the AC joint. Now we are palpating the acromion on the right and the distal clavicle on the left. We can see that a very nice space was already created at that moment, but I always like to perform a very safe interval, so now we are still removing the most upper part of the distal clavicle working through the anterior portal. This is uh, another image with a little more light, and we can see very clearly the AC superior ligament in the upper part of the, the video, but I always like to, to, to enter in the very anterior part of the AC joint too. This is what we are doing now. So now we are seeing the clavicle on the right part and the acromion on the left part. And this is the best way, in my opinion, too, to achieve the very posterior superior part of the distal bony in the distal clavicle. Now we are, we are removing what was left in the posterior superior part of the distal clavicle. And we are clearly seeing the AC's superior ligament, and we are now palpating it with a, a, a nephroscope, in a, a nephroscopic uh, probe. We are palpating it just to be sure that no bone was left in the middle of the AC superior ligament, and in this case, it was absolutely okay. And we are seeing the acromion on the left part of the the video, the, the distal clavicle on the right part of the video. Now we, we, are, we are feeling the interval with the spinal needle, the acromion on the left, the distal clavicle on the right, and we can clearly see that we had created quite a, an interval, about one centimeter, and at that moment the surgery was then finally finished.